I've been working on a script and adding some new animation uh, Python bindings to Krita, and I just wanted to show off this plugin I've been working on. I'll just go through how to use it now and I'll kind of show you how you can get it later. So it'll you'll eventually be able to get to it by going to scripts animator video reference. Uh, from here it's just kind of a little window. You can choose a video. Um, so we'll just load up this guy. It kind of shows a preview in the area. It has like a timeline scrubber type of thing so you can kind of move around and see where it's at. Uh, it shows you kind of the current frame number uh, that you're scrubbed to. Here's kind of the time in seconds. And here's a lot of the original dimensions of the video. Uh, I mean, one way you could use it, you could just use this as a reference. And then you could just kind of step through the video uh, one by one. And then you could just kind of go back and forth. I. One one of the things that made me think about doing something like this was I've kind of used video reference before and I used VLC, which VLC is really good for just having video playback. But whenever you have to step through frames going forward, it can do that pretty well, but it actually doesn't really go backwards uh, frame by frame like this. So I think it's just, it was always a little nerve wracking doing using a uh, video reference like this so I just thought hey why not make something in Krita to do so something like that as kind of a learning exercise uh, so you can either reference it like that the other pretty neat thing which will probably be used more is you can actually export out a set of these frames and it'll import it into Krita so let's say if I wanna start maybe starting at 57 seconds I want to maybe import some of these and kind of trace them or rotoscope them or something and then maybe let's see and then maybe I'll just go to I'll just go there so 64 so we'll, just, we'll go five seconds um, uh, the frames per second is just what you want your document frames per second to be and the skip interval has to do something with uh, exporting out every frame or every other frame so if you want to just export out every single frame you can just leave it at one but if for some reason you want every other frame to be imported you could bump this up to two the only reason I had this one is because it's also in the f the file I, I guess I can't do it but there's a file import f animation frames and that options also in here so I just carried it over from that so yeah, once you kind of get that going, you can just do export frames. This thing will kind of gray out. You can kind of see it populated all the frames in here. And then that's pretty much done. So that's, you can, if you wanted to, it, it, if you used it like that, you could close this out. It kind of automatically locks the layer, but you can kind of see it uh, kind of play the animation. Oh, whoops. What happened there? Oh, I, okay, wait, there we go. There, so now you can kind of see it like that. And then you'll also notice it brings over the end time. So depending on what you set the duration at, it'll automatically set the end time. So then it'll kind of just loop. So it just, it just kind of updates it, that part automatically. So that's pretty neat. If you were roto rotoscoping this or tracing this or something, you would probably want to. Uh, I probably just hit the backspace on the canvas to fill that with white, and I'd probably lower the opacity with this, and then I'd probably just kind of like this layer above. I'd probably just turn this into an animation layer, and then you could just start tracing. You could kind of just start tracing over it type of thing and then uh, yeah you could just use it for reference or however you want to do it so uh, yeah this will be available probably in 4.2 uh, I think because some of this stuff you, you really can't do right now with the uh, Python like the whole imp the way that, that the plugin imports 
imports video from here into the thing is kind of a new thing I did. Uh, or it's a, some new Python calls that I made, so you can't really... Python can't do that right now with Krita in the current version. So, yeah, with 4.2, you'll be able to import stuff in through Python, as well as do things like setting the frame rate, or I think you can even change the current frame with where you're at, or you can get the current frame, and a few things like that. But if, if you want to get it er earlier, and if you want to start playing around with it, uh, kind of the two ways you can do it is if you just go on GitHub and you type animator reference, it'll be the second one on the list. You can just do that and has a little screenshot. And yeah, you can just download the files. Um, I think it says on different operating systems. Uh, so that's that. And then, yeah, and then so Krita 4.2 is not out yet. So to be able to actually get it to work with the Python stuff, you're going to have to get the Krita next version. So that kind of has the nightly builds with what everything's doing. So if you just download the portable version here too, you can kind of play around with it and as well as the new Python stuff if you want to. So once you put your plugin inside of your folder, uh, so for Linux, the plugin right now is my desktop local share uh, Krita, PyCrita. So once you have, have it there, you're going to have to go into config settings, configure Krita, uh, the Python plugin manager. And originally when you see this, it's going to be uh, unchecked like this. So when you check it, you're going to hit OK, and then you actually have to restart Krita for it to show up. So when you enable it, you're not going to see it here like this. So you're going to have to close it, and then restart Krita, and then you're going to see it in the tools menu. So that's it. Let me know what you think about the features, or if there's other things you want me to do with it. I thought it would be helpful for doing animation stuff, so I thought I would make something. I also had potentially an idea of kind of going over the process of how I made this plugin from the very beginning with just having absolutely nothing to slowly kind of adding stuff and then making it more complex and then revising it and then even g going the, the step of seeing that there's certain Python functions that are missing and then going into and seeing how to add those Python things into Krita, which would be, that'd be a little bit more deep because I'd be using C++, but I could go into a little more depth if people are interested in doing uh, plug-in stuff. I will say doing a lot of the Python scripting, I, I actually like it quite a bit. Uh, it's very fast. It's really nice to be able to have a problem and then quickly make a change, and then I can just launch Krita again and test it out. The one thing I don't like about the C++ changes is every time you make a change, you pretty much have to, I have to go back in my terminal, I have to recompile it. Uh, depending on what file it is, that could take a little while, and then after it gets done recompiling, then I can launch it. Um, and then it's just, it's a, definitely more of a hassle, I think, doing the C++ stuff than the Python. So uh, I might try to start doing more Python stuff with different ideas.